divine connection for everyone. For me, anywhere you are in this country, Nigeria, all the countries of Africa, beyond Africa, America, Asia, Europe, anywhere you are, the Lord Jesus Christ is going to connect with you now. Power tonight. I need to announce to you that today is going to be a special miracle Monday Bible study. Like Jesus did, he went about preaching and teaching and healing. You are going to have triple dose today in Jesus' name. Your joy will be full. Tell the person by your side, my joy will be full. Be it confirmed in every life in Jesus' name. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you today. We bless your name. You love everyone. God is love. And you have everlasting love for everyone so deep so wide and so high it will reach everyone today in jesus name we well, thank you because of what you are going to do you are going to touch every life you are going to save sinners you are going to deliver the oppressed and you are going to heal the sick miracles upon every life in jesus name we pray god bless you can be seated Tonight, we continue with the Divine Connection Crusade. And the topic tonight is the indispensable divine connector. The connector. The one that connects us with God, with heaven, with miracle, with wonders, through his word. The indispensable divine connector. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 18. And all things are of God, who has reconciled us, he has united us, he has linked us up to himself by Jesus Christ, and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. He has reconciled us. He has connected us. And who is that? His name is right there in the verse. Through the Lord Jesus Christ. And then he has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That anybody you talk to, you will tell them how you are connected. And who connected you. And they too, they will be connected in Jesus' name. And look at verse 19, in verse 19, to wait that is, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself. God was in Christ, and that Christ is the divine connector, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and has committed unto us the word of reconciliation. And then in verse 20, he tells us, Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We plead what you will pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. Today, you'll be connected. You'll be reconciled unto God. And every blessing you need from salvation to healing to deliverance, wonders and signs and miracles will flow into your life in Jesus' name. And look at this in verse 21. It says, himself, that is the Lord himself has now made, he said, he has made him to be seen for us the sin offering and the sacrifice who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him your time has come my time has come there are three things we're looking at look at number one Jesus the Savior and the healer when Jesus connects us with the Almighty God, salvation comes, 
healing comes. Number two, Jesus, the spotless and the holy. That's what makes him qualified because it's spotless because a spear is the lamb of god without blemish that connects us with god by taking away the sin of the world number three jesus the shepherd and the helper he'll become your shepherd and then every lack in your life will be supplied in jesus name it will help you tonight it will lift you up tonight and anything that is bringing suffering in your life tonight it will remove everything in jesus name give me a connected amen let's come to number one number one jesus the savior and the healer we're looking at acts of the apostles chapter five and we're reading from bastachi Acts of the Apostle chapter 5, verse 30, the God of our fathers raised up Jesus. That's the name, that's the connector, the connector that came from heaven and is willing to connect everyone, every boy, every girl, anywhere you are in the world. That's the name that God has given us that will connect us with salvation and connect us with healing the God of our fathers raised up Jesus whom he slew and hanged on a tree look at this look at verse 31 him as God exalted not an angel him as God exalted not a religious man founder of any denomination or any religion him Jesus God as exalted with his right hand look at this to be a prince and a savior to be a prince and a savior. Anybody can call himself savior, but heaven will not recognize that name. But the only one that is recognized in heaven, exalted by the almighty God, and he is made a prince, the Lord, the king, and a savior to give repentance to Israel, to a whole nation, and to a whole family and to a whole individual if we can give it to a whole nation somebody who can supply water for a whole nation can supply water for an individual and for you for me say for me it to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And then he tells us in uh, Second Timothy chapter 1, reading from verse 9, I'm revealing to you from the scriptures that the Father has raised up, has appointed Jesus as the divine connector. You mention that name, you'll be connected immediately. You believe in that name, you'll be connected immediately. Second Timothy chapter 1, reading from verse 9, who has saved us and called us with an holy calling, not according to our works, we were bad in the past, but now the Lord looked away from all that uh, evil and all the badness and all the, all the transgression and he cleansed everything away and he says it, the salvation is not according to our works but according to his own purpose and grace which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. You understand that? That Jesus Christ was appointed to be the Savior of before the world began and what had been appointed and decided before the beginning of the world there is no power now on earth can change that jesus will be your savior look at verse 10 in verse 10 but is now made manifest by the appearing of our savior jesus christ he now appeared before the world began, he had been appointed as the Savior. You know, all the people that are projecting themselves in this part of the world, that part of the world, that country, that nation, and they say that they are Savior, they came too late. From the beginning of the world, before the beginning of the world, Jesus, the Son of God, 
Jesus, the divine connector, had been appointed that he will be your connector. And now you came today and it will connect you with salvation in Jesus' name. He says, who has abolished death and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel, through the good news. That the good news coming to you today and the Lord will affirm and confirm this good news in your life in Jesus' name. Jesus is so very near. Your salvation is so very near. The Savior is so very near. He says, I know you. I know your problem. I know your difficulty. I know your challenges. And I have been appointed by the Heavenly Father to come and save you. As we just stretch out your hand and say, yes, Lord, I accept. I agree. You are the divine connector. It will connect you. Connect you with heaven. Connect you with salvation. You will be saved. You must be saved with all that Jesus Christ has done and he has finalized, finished everything. Salvation is yours. Salvation is mine. I said salvation is mine. Look at Titus chapter 2. We're looking at verse 10. In Titus chapter 2 verse 10, not for loining, not roaming about, but showing all good fidelity that they may adorn the doctrine of God, the, our Savior in all things. It's a Savior. And it says now when that Savior enters into your heart and salvation enters into your heart, new life will begin. I said new life will begin. It comes in, it grants you eternal life. It comes in and it gives you power to be a different person, a new creature. And that new creation will show the evidence of that salvation. When, when the Savior is there, salvation must be there. When the Redeemer is there, redemption must be there. And when the one who has come to set us free, when he connects you and he connects you with heaven, freedom will be in your life in Jesus' name. Look at verse 11. It says in verse 11, for the grace of God that bringeth salvation, the grace of God never comes into any life empty-handed. There are people that come to us and then they come to visit us and they come and they sit down and you, they don't even give us a cup of water to drink. And then after you are going, you just go as you came. But the grace of God doesn't come like that. The grace of God is visiting you tonight. What are you? It will come. The grace of God that brings salvation has appeared unto how many people here? Has appeared unto how many people? That grace has appeared to all men. It's yours. It's mine. And that grace will not leave you empty-handed in Jesus' name. And then the grace of God does not leave us the way we were before. Look at verse 12. It's a teaching us. That's the grace of God. is teaching us to deny ungodliness and worldly laws. And that we should live soberly. You see, when you come to the Lord and the Lord comes to you and the Lord connects you with heaven, when he connects you with heaven, you are disconnected from hell. And you hear your amen. And all the characteristics of hell, you know in hell, they'll be crying, they'll be shouting, and they'll be cursing, they'll be blaspheming and doing every other thing. But now, because you are disconnected from hell and connected to heaven, all the gracious things of heaven will be in your life. It, that's why it says that we should not live soberly and righteously and godly in this present world in this present world after your connection after the divine connector has connected you you live soberly when in this present world righteously when do you live righteously in this present world and godly when do you live godly 
in this present world you are talking as if you are not very sure and then you're looking for something look at verse 13 in verse 13 looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great god this is the name again and our savior jesus christ in verse 14 it says who gave himself for us so as to connect us he gave himself is perfected the work already as the divine connector and because he's done it already all you need to do is to say lord i accept lord i believe and lord i confess as you have done it for me and you said it is finished i know it is done i am connected and you are saying tonight if nobody else is connected i i I, I will be connected in Jesus' name. And then he tells us in verse 14, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity. How many iniquities will he redeem you from? All iniquity. And when you, if, let's say, for example, now, you take all the chairs away from the auditorium. Then, when you come in, you'll not see any chair anymore. The same thing with iniquity. When it comes to your life, and it connects you with the Almighty God, and it connects you with the Creator of the heavens and the earth, and the salvation of God comes into you, then all those iniquities that were there before, it takes everything away, and no iniquity will remain in your life anymore in Jesus' name. And purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works. That tells us about the Savior, Jesus the Savior. Now Jesus the healer is your healer. Tonight is your healer. Now he created us. And he brought all those different parts, the legs and the hands and the ears and the mouth and the nose and the brain, everything, and put everything together perfectly. When a manufacturer manufactured a car, and then you get that car, and the car is good and nice, smooth running and perfect, if anything goes wrong, if you take it to this place and that place and that place, they might fumble with it, and, but you take it back to the manufacturer. And when you leave that car in the hand of, manuf of the manufacturer, he knows what's wrong, and he knows what to put right, and then when you get it back again, it is brand new. Your body, the Lord manufactured that body. If anything is wrong tonight, we're going to take that car back, that body back unto the Lord, and the Lord will so renew it and refurbish it and remanufacture any spare part of your body that is not working well. Tonight, you'll fix this one there and fix that one there and fix that one there and by the time the divine connector they connects you with the almighty god tonight total healing has come total freedom has come it has come to you what is the person i'm talking to there it has come it has come no disease will eat up your life no disaster will destroy your life. Amen. The word of the supernatural divine connector will come unto you and it will make everything in your body make it new. Amen. You will breathe normally. Amen. Your heart will be all right. Amen. Your bones will be all right. Amen. Every part of you will come afresh as if you are a newborn baby. Amen. Tonight you will sleep well. Look at Matthew, Matthew chapter 8, and I'm reading from verse 5. It says, and when Jesus, remember that name, that's the divine connector. When Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him. And then in verse 6, it says, saying, Lord, 
my servant lies at home sick of the palsy and I couldn't even lift him and bring him up. He's so terribly sick and he's so terribly down and the impotence and made him to have a heavier weight. He's grievously tormented and I cannot even open my eyes and to keep on seeing him like that. And then Jesus said, this always he says, he has never changed Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today and forever. And Jesus says unto him, him, I will come and heal him. I will come and heal him. He didn't ask the man how serious because no matter how serious, I will come and heal him. He didn't ask the man when did it start because it doesn't matter whenever it started, I will come and heal him. What's the source of the problem? Is it a yoke? Is it a curse? Is it this? Is it that? Is it the genotype? Is it because of the parents? He didn't ask any question. Do the people have history of this torment in their families? No question. I will come and heal him. He will come and heal you. He'll come and deliver you. Whatever the source of the problem and whatever the challenge and whatever the case history in your family, he will come and heal you. But look at the surprising thing in verse 8. In verse 8, the centurion answered and said, Lord, I'm not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only. Speak the word only. I didn't hear you. Speak the word only. And my servant shall be healed. Look at this centurion. This centurion made a confession greater than the confession of some people who have been reading the Bible for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. This man said, I'm not worthy. I'm a Gentile. I'm not a Jew. I don't merit anything, but I know that if you speak the word here, your word will travel and go anywhere anybody is that needs a solution to their problem, it will be done. If I was there, I would have asked the centurion, how did you say that? How could you say that? But now I understand why he said it. Can I tell you? I said, can I tell you, God was in heaven. That's his place of abode. And here on earth, he wanted to create the whole earth. And he didn't have to travel here because he's present everywhere. And on his throne over there in heaven, he spoke the word, let there be, and there was with all that long distance. And he says, I know you were appointed from the foundation of the earth. And I know in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And without him was not anything made that was made. You were over there and you spoke the word and it was done. Don't bother to come to my house. Stay where you are, speak the word and my servant shall be healed. It will happen to you. As you hear the word of salvation here, is said unto you, salvation will come. As you hear the word of healing and the word of deliverance sent from here, is the same word. It's the word of the Lord himself. And we are just his mouthpiece. And we are saying what he has said. And we say his word, we're just channels. And the channel is not the originator of the word. The channel is through whom that word is coming. And that word coming through the channel tonight, you are delivered. Amen. You are healed. Amen. You are set free. You will never be the same again in Jesus' name. Now look at verse 9 and look at this man. For I am a man under authority. Having soldiers under me. And I say to this man, go and he goeth. The man knew 
the effect, the power, the outcome of authority. He said, I have soldiers under me. They are under me. And sicknesses are under you. And families under you. And if you will speak, if I speak to the soldier and I tell him go, he has to go. He doesn't give any excuse. He doesn't delay instantaneously, immediately, and promptly. That soldier goes. And I know you have a great authority that is given to you from heaven. My own authority as a centurion. He was saying, uh, the Roman government gave me from the headquarters. And then uh, th that authority is always there. And your own authority is coming from the headquarters of heaven and earth. And if you speak that word, that word will be fulfilled. And then when I say to another, come, he cometh, and to my servant do this, and he doeth it. Then in verse 10, we're told, when Jesus had it, he marveled and said unto them that followed, verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. Look at verse 13. In verse 13, it says, And Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way. The Lord is telling you tonight, Go thy way. And as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. And his servant was healed in the same self self same hour authority somebody shout authority. authority it was given to the lord from heaven and when he spoke the word everything that negated the peace and the serenity of the people everything had to vanish away now he did it for that servant you are the next Look at verse 16. In verse 16, it tells us, When the evening was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirits with his word, with his word, with his word. It's the word that comes to you, and that word will cast out any activity of evil spirit in your body, even tonight in Jesus' name. And he healed all that were sick. He healed all without exception. He healed all that were sick. Look at verse 17, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Zias the prophet, saying, himself, himself, himself took our infirmities and bear our sicknesses. Has he changed? I said, has the Savior changed? Has the healer changed? He will do it for you tonight. Let's come to point number two. This divine connector, his name is Jesus. By the way, what qualified him to be able to do that above, beyond, ahead of any human being. Why is it that Jesus can do and Jesus will do what no man can do, whether the man is on the other side or on this side? Why is it that he is special? Why is it that he is so supernatural that what men cannot do, he will do in our lives because he's Jesus the spotless and the holy. I want you to look at Hebrews chapter 9, verse 14. Hebrews chapter 9, reading from verse 14. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot, the spotless, offered himself without spots to God purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God because he's special because he's spotless and because his blood is pure and perfect no spot no blemish in it that blood 
will wash you whiter than snow. Amen. It'll cleanse your heart, it'll cleanse your conscience, and it'll cleanse your personality through and through. In Jesus' name. Amen. Verse 15, it says, And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the false testament. All the transgressions that are named in the Old Testament. And now, even in the New Testament, all those transgressions, it says this and this and that. This is transgression. Anybody who does this is trespassing, is going beyond the line appointed by the Lord. Now the blood of Jesus will wipe away all those transgressions from your life in Jesus' name. He will put all your sins in the depths of the ocean of God's forgetfulness and they will not be remembered against your life anymore. That day, a day which are called, receive the promise of eternal inheritance. He has called us and he called us into salvation. He called us into redemption. And then he says, when we come in like that, we have uh, the promise and the provision and the performance of eternal inheritance. It is mine. I said it is mine. First Peter chapter 1, reading from verse 18. We're following through on the scriptures that say that our Redeemer, our Savior, the one who comes to cleanse us and the one who comes to deal and heavenly oppression in our heart that he is spotless as well as holy. It tells us in First Peter chapter 1, verse 18, for as much as you know, that she were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers. Look at verse 19. But for the precious blood of Jesus, that blood has been shed already. And you don't need to add anything to that blood. That blood is sufficient. That blood is perfect. And that blood is sufficient for you, sufficient for me, and sufficient for the whole of humanity. And you don't, if you add anything, whatever you are adding will defile that blood. It is perfect already. Any addition of water, of candle, any addition of your good works, any addition of maybe I need to add this and do this and do this, any addition will make that blood incapable of saving you. Let the blood of Jesus remain as pure, as perfect, as spotless, as blameless as it is. And all the provision of Calvary will be yours in Jesus' name. It says, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Let's come to Hebrews chapter 7. We're reading from verse 25. It says, wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost no matter how deep the well you are falling into is, his hand is long enough, he's able to save you to the uttermost. And then, as he saves you now, he's able to carry you on and carry you through until the end, you remain saved in his hand in Jesus' name. Because he's able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him by him he is the connector the divine connector anyone who takes another way will not be saved but those who come to god by him seeing he ever lived to make intercession for them look at verse 26 in verse 26 for such an high priest became us defeated us who is holy the same that's christ 
that's the savior is the spotless and the holy for such an high priest became us who is holy harmless undefiled separate from sinners and made higher than the heavens and now we're told in first peter chapter 3 verse 18 for christ also has once suffered for sins the just for the unjust that's him the just for you the unjust that he might bring us to god connection that he might bring us to God, divine connection. That he might bring us to God, unfailing connection, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. If you are not connected yet tonight, you are connected. Amen. And then your sins are gone. And all those deformities and all those diseases, as you are connected with him tonight, all those things are gone from your life in Jesus name look at 4 John chapter 3 I'm reading from verse 1 first John chapter 3 we're reading from verse 1 behold what manner of love the father has bestowed upon us look at that behold what manner of love the father has bestowed upon me upon me upon me that we shall be called the sons of God. What a name, what a title. That you shall be called a child of God, a son of God, a daughter of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. And then in verse 2, it says, Beloved, now, somebody shout now. Say it again. Anywhere you go, as you are connected with God through the divine connector, don't, don't act and don't cry and don't walk like a miserable person, like an orphan. I'm not an orphan. I said I am not an orphan. You're not an orphan in Jesus' name. Whenever something happens, compare what happens with what you have. Your inheritance and then who your father is, who your savior is, who the comforter is unto you, the Holy Ghost, and how heaven recognizes you, how all the angels rejoice because you have repented and because you belong to the Lord. When you think about who you are, what you have, what you possess, what your mansions are, and where you are going, the puny thing, that little thing, will not harass your life anymore. You are favored by God. Amen. You are blessed by God. Amen. Beloved, now are we the sons of God? And it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. We shall see him as he is i will see him somebody there i will see him look at verse five he tells us in verse five and you know that he was manifested to take away our sins and in him is no sin he is perfect he is blameless he is spotless he is holy he is pure, he is heavenly, with him, in him, there is no sin. And then he came to take away our sins from us. Any guilt tonight, he'll take it away. Any condemnation tonight, he'll take it away. Any bad habit there tonight, he'll take it away in Jesus' name. He has been manifested to take away our sins. And in him is no sin. He is my Savior. Say it aloud. He is my healer. He is spotless. He is holy. 
because of him i am accepted by the father point number three now is jesus the shepherd and the helper jesus your shepherd and your helper jesus my shepherd my shepherd and my helper john chapter 10 verse 11 i am never i was not i will be i am today for you i am the good shepherd the good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep he has given his life for you he has become your sacrifice he has become your substitute and he is your savior and he will make sure you are connected with the heavenly father and then in verse 14 it says i am the good shepherd i know my sheep and i'm known of mine you see the two-way traffic i know them and they know me i know him i know him he is my savior and once I confess that and I accept him as my savior, I know him and he knows me. He knows me. He knows me. And he has given me eternal life. Look at verse 27. He says, therefore, does my father, in verse 27, verse 27, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. And he has given me something. I said he has given me something. What has he given me? Verse 28, and I give unto them eternal life. What do you have? when the divine connector connects you with the heavenly father he gives you eternal life and they shall never perish and they shall never perish if i was inside my room all alone by myself i'll start dancing all by myself before the lord i won't do it in public but i'll do it in my room as if i will never perish and then i will look up as if i'm seeing the face of jesus i say thank you jesus i will never perish and then i will dance with joy i will never pay somebody there i will never perish and then he says, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. He is my shepherd and he is my helper. He is your helper. Where are you? He will help you tonight. Look at Hebrews chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 14. Hebrews chapter 4. I will read him from verse 14. It says, seeing then that we have a great high priest, a great high priest greater than the heavens that is passed into the heavens jesus the son of god that's him the divine connector that connects you with the lord and salvation comes and healing comes and deliverance comes and everything you need comes into your life it says the son of god let us hold fast our profession let us hold fast our confession let us hold fast our confidence and then in verse 15 it says for we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of infirmities but he was in all points tempted like as we are yet without sin our savior yet without sin our sanctifier yet without sin our redeemer yet without sin our healer deliverer redeemer yet without sin now look at verse 16 it says in verse 16 let us therefore come let us therefore come the sinner can come let us there come the believer can come let us there come the, the sea can come let us there come those who are tormented by evil spirits and evil powers everybody can come let us therefore come boldly what do we come boldly because we're sure we will not be denied you will not be denied 
Savior will not be denied. Salvation available tonight in Jesus' name. Healing available tonight in Jesus' name. We come boldly to the throne of grace, not to the throne of judgment. Judgment day has not come today for you, for me, for us, for everyone. In the day of mercy. I said in the day of mercy. Whatever you have done, whatever condemnation, and you are thinking that there is a hand, a big hand in heaven with a big hammer, and it's going to smash your head. No, not at all. God is love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth on him will not perish, and you will not perish, but have everlasting life. Now is the day of grace. He's sitting on the throne of grace, and he said that we may obtain mercy. We may obtain mercy. Look at you there. You will obtain mercy. I see you there, you will obtain mercy. And all those people by themselves over there, and you are hearing the message, and you are seeing me, even though I cannot see you, you are going to obtain mercy, mercy for salvation, and mercy for healing, and mercy for deliverance, and mercy for blessing. You obtain mercy today, and you find grace to help, grace to help, grace to help, grace to help, it will help you. Help has come. Help has come. Sufficient help, supernatural help has come to you tonight in Jesus' name. In the time of need. In the time of need. I need salvation in the time of need. He'll give you that salvation. I need healing in the time of need. It will give you that healing. I need deliverance in the time of need. It will give you that deliverance. I need redemption, full redemption in the time of need. It will give you that redemption. I need help from God. He's my shepherd and he's my helper. And I need help. That help you need, that help is coming right now. Wipe those tears away and take that sorrow away and then all the thought of he never answers me I never get anything today you get something exactly what you are asking for you will get in Jesus name let us therefore push everything aside take all hindrances away and let us therefore come let us therefore come in your mind in your spirit you say lord i come nothing will hold me back nothing will pin me down lord i come let us come therefore boldly with assurance and with confidence knowing the lord will do it in your life today by coming to the throne of grace that i may obtain mercy and find grace to help in this time and this day and this night of my need i'll find it it has come i said it has come why don't you rise up and welcome the blessing of god in your life it has come it has come salvation has come healing has come the one who is a divine connector has been qualified and appointed before the foundation of the earth and nothing can change that satan cannot change that the system of the world cannot change that. He is your divine connector. Look up to God and say, Lord, I come. I come in the name of that divine connector. I'm connected now with salvation. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord, tell the Lord. I'm connected with forgiveness. Tell the Lord. I'm connected with peace of mind. Tell the Lord. Connection. Connection, the divine connector connects you tonight. The divine connector connects you tonight. Come confidently, come boldly, come cheerfully, come with assurance. He cannot reject you. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. 
He is the mighty divine connector. He is the efficacious, efficient divine connector. He is the unfailing divine connector. Impartial, impartial, impartial. He never rejects anyone, no matter how far gone you are. The divine connector of salvation, of the Lord, with redemption, I'll connect you right there today. Accept, accept what you have suffered. Lord, I accept your salvation. Lord, I accept your forgiveness. Lord, I accept your grace. Lord, I accept your mercy. Now you are connected. Accept that. Believe that. Confess that. We come boldly to the throne of grace. Tell the Lord you accept. Tell the Lord you are saved. Tell the Lord you are divinely connected. Of the Lord who has brought salvation unto you. The grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared unto all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lost, now that we're connected with the Savior, we live soberly, righteously, godly in this present world as an evidence of our salvation. The grace for new life he gives. Accept that. The grace for his sober character he gives Accept that. The grace for righteousness, righteous living, he grants us. Believe, accept, confess. And the grace for godliness, he grants us. Lord, I accept. Lord, I believe. Lord, I confess with my mouth that Jesus died for me on the cross of Calvary and that he rose again. Salvation is mine. In Jesus' name we pray. Say in Jesus' name I pray. In Jesus' name I pray. It is done. Amen. You are receiving the Lord as your personal Savior wherever you are already. is the divine connector. And right now he's connecting you. And the moment we mention that name, our Savior, you are connected and salvation is there. Amen. Wherever you are, is of that hand. And lay the other hand on your heart. Father, in the name of Jesus, Amen. I pray for everyone that is opening their hearts right now to receive the Lord Jesus as their personal Savior. Come into their hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. You are the divine connector, the sinless connector, the spotless connector, the holy connector, and then the heavenly appointed connector. I pray right now, connect them with your salvation in Jesus' name. Amen. You cannot fail. You will never say no. 
Confirm it, Lord, in their hearts right now and turn their lives around for the better to now continue to follow you. Thank you because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Another amen. It is done. I said it is done. If you believe that, say, I know it is done.